Welcome to another WatchGuard Wire Vlog. For our Halloween episode, we wanted to show you something scary. Specifically, how easy it is to crack pathetically weak landman passwords. In a previous Security Wise video we posted to YouTube, Scott Pinzon showed you how to use a tool Loftcrack to attack Windows passwords using brute force techniques. Today we're going to show you what happens when attackers use something called rainbow tables to do the same thing. Before I describe rainbow tables, let me talk a little bit about Windows Landman passwords, or LM passwords. There's only three things you really need to know. First of all, LM passwords can be no longer than 14 characters. Second of all, even though you have a 14 character password, Windows actually stores LM passwords in two parts. So in reality, you only have two seven character passwords. Finally, although LM technology is legacy password technology, new operating systems like Windows XP, Windows 2003, and Windows 2000 actually still support legacy landman passwords. If you use a password that's under 14 characters, even using Kerberos Windows passwords, Windows is probably storing a landman hash for that password as well. So now that you know a little bit about landman passwords, let's look at rainbow tables. Well, you're probably wondering what is a rainbow table? When an attacker brute forces a password, he has to generate a hash for every possible password combination. As he's generating these hashes, he compares them to ones in the table he's trying to crack. If he gets a match, he knows the password. To speed things up, what if the attacker saved all his brute force work? He could create a table of all the passwords and hashes he was generating. Next time he wanted to crack a password, all he'd have to do is go through that table looking for a hash that matches the one he tried to crack. This would significantly speed up his cracking process. However, this table would have to be huge to have every possible password. This essentially is what a rainbow table is. It's just a file full of pre-computed hashes and passwords. So to compare brute force and rainbow table password cracking techniques, we set up a password cracking test. In this test, I used the same password file we used in Scott's loft crack brute forcing video. I then supplemented that file with 80 more logins and passwords just to make the challenge a little tougher. Next, I downloaded a big rainbow table you can find on the Shmoo Group's website. This was a 64 gigabyte file when all is said and done, so you can see how big rainbow tables get. Once I had those two components, I downloaded rainbow crack and set it against my password file. To start cracking, I type this command, which tells rcrack to use my 64 gigabyte rainbow table to crack my password hash file. Right away, I see some errors about invalid password hashes. These errors represent the passwords that are more than 14 characters long. This rainbow table only supports landman passwords, so it can't crack passwords that are over 14 characters. Now, I just sit back and wait for the results. In this case, the cracking process took around four hours. We'll speed up this video so you see what happens. Now for the results. In only four hours, our crack discovered 100% of the passwords that were 14 characters or less. In our previous video, it took a whole week to brute force only 93% of the passwords that were 14 characters or less. So you can see how much quicker rainbow tables are compared to brute force. So what are the lessons here? If you're a normal Windows user, make sure to select a password that's longer than 14 characters. If you're an administrator, look into disabling legacy support for landman passwords. Windows Vista and XP have password storage mechanisms that are much more powerful. So thanks for watching the WatchGuard Wire. <laughs>